Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and to part two of the video surrounding the DJI Mavic Air 2. If you haven't watched part one, basically I have got this out of its box, unboxed it and built all the propellers. And in this video, I'm going to show you all the steps you need to take, including activation, where you need to start thinking about any sort of insurance you might want, and then setting up the DJI Fly app to get it to work with the drone, cover some basics, and then in part three, we'll be able to fly in this beast. So let's get into it. Right, so first things first, the first thing you should do after the unboxing is put everything on charge. Now I have done that, so what we can do is we can just test this. So if we press this button on the controller, you can see four lights. That doesn't turn it on, that just checks how much battery is left. And then we can do the same with the batteries look. So we'll press that one. And hopefully we've got four lights, which we have, okay? So that's nice and simple. So like I said, the first things you do, make sure they're all charged before you start this next process. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put one of the batteries in the drone, turn the controller on. Hopefully you have installed your sticks. I did show you in the last video how to do this, but realistically they just unscrew and screw back on from the bottom there. And then what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to put our phone in here. If we can get it out. There we go. It's quite stiff because it's new. So we're going to pop our phone into there and you need to select which cable you are going to be using so just pop that out here so if you are an iphone user you would use that one or the kit does come with two others for micro usb or usb c so i thought i'd do this next step on camera just to show you guys how you do it so as you've already seen i have just unplugged one side of this okay and that's to be able to switch it to the usb c connector that i use so what we're going to do is it is quite tight i don't know if you can see in there i'm just going to pop that out there we go and then we're going to take our USB quickly, fiddly to do, that'd be nice to see. Just push that in there, and then that would normally wrap around and store nicely, just like that. Okay, they have got a little bit of a cable hanging out, but you just simply just tuck that in and pop that down. So that's how we change the cable. Um, hopefully, you found that a little bit useful. So now let's get into it. Right, so the next step is to place your phone in the holder. Now, I find the best way to do it, and try and do it this way, okay, is to simply Slot your phone in that way, look, and then push up. Don't know how anybody else does it, but that's the way that I find it easy. And then we're just going to pop our cable in. And there we go. We are good to go. That's all my home screen apps, but we're not going to be using that. We're going to be using the DJI Fly app. If you are a new drone user and you don't have the DJI Fly app, you are going to need to go get that first. That's the one that covers the Mavic Air 2, the Mini 2, and the Mavic Mini. Now... There has been a lot of controversy regarding updates and where you can get the updated apps from. I have covered it on this channel already. Simply, the best way to get the latest version of the app is to download it through the links on the DJI website. I will link in the description below and above my head now a little video tutorial on how you go ahead and do that. That is by far the easiest way of doing it. So now you have the DJI Fly app. What we need to do is turn our controller on. Now, the way we turn our controller on is by press it the button once and then again quickly there we go that's now on and as you can see the buttons are flashing because they're preparing for a connection let's now take one of our batteries and let's place it inside the drone and we just push that in there all right and now it's time to unfold the arms so to turn the drone on we're going to do the same thing with this button as what we did or oh, actually Little mistake I just made. Don't forget to remove the gimbal cover before you turn your drone on. Massively important. So to turn the drone on, we're going to press these buttons. So fast once and then fast again. So now, as you can see, we have got this screen where it says activate the Mavic Air 2. Now, this is very, very important. Okay. So this is going to all come down to what cover you are going to want on your drone okay so once you activate this drone you have only got 48 hours with which to purchase dji care refresh should you wish to do so okay. and ideally just do it before your first flight it's as simple as that okay now i have done a video a comprehensive video on what cover is available for these drones okay so i compared DJI Care Refresh compared to an independent company uh, called Cover Drone. 
So again, you might find that information useful. So go check that out, right? So we're going to click agree on our controller. That's going to activate this little guy. So we're going to click activate. So aircraft information will be linked to your account as a basis for maintenance and after sale service. Yet we're fine with that. Let's activate and we're just binding that now. You can see it's restarting the aircraft. Right, so that's the aircraft activated. So we're going to go ahead and press done. Now, there you go. This is your prompt to purchase DJI K Refresh. So this is the time where you need to do this. Do you want DJI K Refresh? And you need to purchase it within 48 hours, as you can see with the prompt on screen. So what do you get with DJI K Refresh? You get two replacements, express replacement. You get water damage cover and free two-way shipping. Um, there is a little bit more to it than that because, you know, it does cover up to two replacements, but there is a bit of an excess fee on these. So just bear that in mind. It's not a free replacement just because you've taken DJI K Refresh. There is more to it. But like I say, in that video where I compare the insurances, there's so much more to it. So let's click more. You'll be directed to the official website where you can purchase DJI K Refresh after exiting. Continue. Let's confirm. They're really trying to get us to buy DJI K Refresh, aren't they? So let's click confirm. So... Keep the app open and ensure the battery level of the RC in aircraft is higher than 40%. Update needs approximately 10 minutes to finish. Right, so this is quite important. So when you get the drone out of the box, now this was made back in April and they are constant update, updates both to firmware and the app updates as well. Um, the batteries themselves, I was going to use another one. Yep. So the batteries themselves, they have their own firmware and Essentially, you need to update the firmware for the aircraft. You need to update the firmware for the battery, each individual battery. The controller will also have some firmware updates as well. So part of this, make sure you do all of them. You could technically fly without doing any of these updates. Absolutely do not recommend that whatsoever. Get all your updates done. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And we'll skip to, uh, we'll skip to when that part's done. So now you can see we need to do the battery firmware update, um, as I previously advised. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Update the battery firmware. Oh, it's like exciting. I can't wait to get flying with this thing. But like I said, that is coming in video too. And you do need to update the firmware on all three batteries if you want the fly more combo. Of course, if you didn't even have got one battery, you just need to do the one. So for a while now on my screen, I've been seeing the little Mavic Mini um, at this uh, home screen. Or I've been seeing the Mini 2. And this has just been my dr dream drone for so long and now yet yeah, i finally got one right mavic air 2 firmware is installed as you can see there firmware update let's click the x and get rid of that right let's click go fly so first thing we're going to be greeted with is i have put the sd card in this already if you don't know where that goes there is a little slot just on the side and it is right here all right that's where your sd card goes as you can see i've put mine in and the drone has detected that i've got an sd card in there that's why it's giving me this option. We'll click confirm for that. These are the first steps you need to go through. So if you look at the bottom left corner, you can see where you're, you've got your height and you've got your distance. So those are simply the height of the drone in the air and the distance away from it. One thing to note as well is what we're going to do is we're going to go to the little square in the right hand side. I'm just covering the very basics here. All right. And that's where you can switch between photo, video, hyperlapse or pano. You can flick between 4K wide and 4K zoom, 2.7K. My God, these are so much more options than what I'm used to. This is amazing. And of course, one of the major features of this drone is it does have 4K 60 frames per second. Photo, single, 48, smart, best, AEB, of course, hyperlapse. So, so much more options than the other drones. Honestly, that's fantastic. Over in the top corner, you can see where it says N on the controller. That is if you want to switch your speed so if you want cine smooth you click it there if you want sport you would click it there but i would always advise just leaving it in normal or even cine, cine smooth until you get used to the drone let's look at some other options up in the top corner then because these are really really important and these are something you have to get right okay so let's click our three buttons in the top so obstacle avoidance now obviously this is new for this drone and new to me what do i want the drone to do if it comes into an obstacle well, for me, you know, I don't want it to break. I want it to bypass and it'll go around that object. Now, all of this is something that I'm going to do in a video so you will be able to see it all. Disable sideways flight. No, I want to enable sideways flight because that's going to get you some really cool shots. One of the major things you need to make sure you have got set. 
So legally in the UK, uh, where I am, and mostly across the world actually, the ceiling for these things is 400 feet or 120 meters. So we're going to leave that flight protection on as max altitude of 120. Now this is where it gets really, really tricky, guys. So your auto return to home altitude. That is possibly one of the most important things you need to get right. Now, if you're out flying your drone, okay, and it loses connection, what's going to happen is it's going to automatically return to home if you've got that feature set. We're going to look at that in a short while. Now, if it does return to home, it does so, so to speak, as the crow flies. So if you've got big buildings around you or a block of flats, and that is in the way of the controller, all right, it will literally, or in the way of its flight path home, unless you have got an auto return to height set at higher than the tallest object around you, there is a chance that you could hit that item when the drone is returning to home of its own accord due to lost connection or low battery. So always check your surrounding area for the largest object that is around there and make sure you set that return to home height, there you go, higher. As you can see there, auxiliary LED on and that's a nice little cool landing light. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Plus naturally it's gonna aid with being able to see the drone in sort of poor lighting conditions. And indeed, it is quite bright, so you're probably going to be able to see it during the daytime as well, or on or off. Leave it on auto. Another thing to mention when it comes to these is the advanced safety settings down at the bottom. Okay, so this is how your drone behaves when you actually lose signal. So do you remember me saying earlier that you want to set your return to home altitude to quite high? So this is because when you lose your signal, you can choose return to home, descend, or hover. Now, I have absolutely no idea why, if you lose your signal, you would want it to descend. It doesn't make any sense because you could be over water, you could be over an obstacle, anything. So you can you can select it, okay, and you select hover where it just sticks. But at the end of the day, if it's if it's lost signal, it's not going to get it back, okay. So <laughs> pressing the hover option really doesn't make any sense. So leave that on return to home, and of course, you know. This is one way you can manually stop the propellers in flight. I, again, I have absolutely no idea why you would want to do that. It's just going to result in the end of your drone or at least some sort of damage. So where it says emergency propeller stop, sticks outwards, just don't do it. Our compass and IMU are normal. Now, compass is quite an important one. It's a quite a polarizing topic. Loads of people have had problems with their compass um, when it comes to DJI drones. So effectively, and we'll do a demo on this as well, but your drone, when, when we go into the fly sort of flight screen or in flight, you can see there is a little compass icon. And I'll show you exactly where it is in the next video. Or you can quickly check out one of my Mavic Mini ones or Mini 2 ones where I do cover it in there. Um, but if that's ever off, so say, for example, the arrow is saying you're pointing your controller straight, yet the drone is over there according to the direction indicator, but your drone is actually right in front of you, so the compass indication is wrong. If you go to the compass, calibrate this compass, that generally fixes that. Let's click across to control. So subject scanning, we have units in metric, in meters, metric, kilometers, or imperial. You just pick whichever one you want. Gimbal, we're gonna keep that in follow mode. So allow upward gimbal rotation. Let's click that because that's we want to be able to move our gimbal upwards. Advanced gimbal settings. Now, just like they added on the DJI Mini 2, you didn't have this feature on the Mavic Mini. You can now adjust the gimbal speed, your speed. Now, I will be doing a video on this just to show the settings that I use. But anyway, um, those are adjustable to get your nice, silky smooth footage. But we're not going to look at that at the minute. Click our camera. What format do you want the video to output in? Generally, MP4 for Windows and Movie for Apple products. That's as simple as that. Color, you can click normal or Cine Like D or D Cine Like, whichever way you want to say it. Now, so Cine Like D basically gives you um, a more flat color profile. And that's ideal if you are really into your editing and want to do some color grading and color correction in post. For most average users, you're going to leave that on normal, and that's going to that's really going to affect your footage because if you don't know what you're doing and you've selected decine like, and then you don't actually go into any editing software and play around with that color grading, your your colors and your video is going to look quite flat. So just leave it normal for now unless you know what you're doing. Coding format two six five, that's fixed, 
anti-flicker, we'll just leave that auto. Video subtitles, again, you can put that on, but I'm not going to bother. Grid lines are a good interesting one. Let's have a look at what options are available. So we'll click the cross, and that's what that looks like. So you've got the center of the screen. Or we can click the grid to add that, or the single point in the middle. All right. So what I tend to go with is because I don't want a huge amount of distractions on screen, I generally just go with the little crosshairs in the middle, and I find that does me absolutely fine. The benefit of this Mavic Air 2 is you do have some internal storage, as you can see, 7.9 gig, or let's call it 8. Now, the benefit of that is if you do, and it has happened before, where you've gone out, got onto location, and then realized that my memory card is in the card reader, still in the computer from the last video. It happens, and yeah, it's an absolute pain. Cache when recording, yes, um, you can select how much, but just be aware as well. I have noticed some issues. So with this cache when recording, if you have got a huge amount of video footage on your phone using this cache feature, quite often it will put a lot of strain on your app, okay? And sometimes cause the app to crash. So, you know, if you do have that on, don't set it at a huge amount because, you know, you don't want to be causing your phone to do a hell of a lot while you're actually trying to record. So definition, HD or smooth. Again, I will cover that in another video, but basically that's the, the screen feedback that you're going to get. So smooth might lower the quality slightly, um, but, you, you know, it'll be less jumpy and less laggy, you know, in poorer connection conditions. Whereas HD, it will try its best to give you a full HD signal at all times. Frequency, you know that I've covered this on the channel. If you're new to the channel and you haven't seen any of that, you can go check that out. But essentially the whole point of OcuSync is the fact that it can channel hop and frequency hop to give you the strongest signal. You would never, ever be in a situation with OcuSync, in fact, as far as I'm aware, where you would ever need to switch that onto a manual channel, other than if you're doing some sort of range test to prove a point, you would always leave it on dual band. Simple as that. So hopefully that has covered us up until now. What I like about the Mini 2 is, I'm oh, sorry, the DJI Mavic Air 2, is the fact that it's got these uh, position lights already. I find that really, really good. Um, and of course, you've got that landing light underneath as well. I do think that even though you've got green at the back and red at the front, I kind of think that there should be green on one side and then red on the other to coincide with the proper navigation colors. But hey, it is what it is. I have shown you in part one, the unboxing. In part two, I've shown you everything, how to get this up in the air, get your firmware installed and set up your DJI Fly app, nice and simple. I've shown you through all the options. Yeah, I've scattered over some of them, but some of them you're not gonna to need to play with. We've covered DJI refresh and insurance. So the next thing left is to go fly this thing. That's going to be in part three. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to go check out all my other videos. Hit like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already, and see you in part three.